Sprint Zero is an anti-pattern that masquerades as established practice. It's the result of a certain problem that pretty much any organisation has to resolve when it first sets up a project. And of course this problem is, well, you're starting from basically scratch. You may not have a team that's fully in place, they may not have the infrastructure that they need, the machines to do development work on, they may not even have desks. Not only that, of course, but you've got a an empty product backlog, or at least a very um, inadequately um, structured and populated uh, product backlog. So there's some setup, there's some initialization work that has to be done before a team can start sprinting properly. Now, if you're following a method like Scrum, uh, it's got a very precise vocabulary, and time is accounted for in terms of sprints. So what organizations sometimes do, or try to do, is to account for all of this setup and initialization work in terms of a sprint. But the problem is it's a fake sprint. That first sprint that you do for taking care of all of this setup work is fake. It's fake because it's not actually delivering value to a product owner that can then be passed on to stakeholders for return on investment. That value isn't there. It's just setup work. And to really be a sprint, you've got to be delivering an increment of value. So it's fake on that count. But it's also fake in that time boxing is rarely respected with a sprint zero. Yeah, if the if the sprints themselves, the sprints pro the sprints proper are say two weeks in length, well, the initial setup work might have been anything. It might have been two months for all that we know. Yeah, it, it takes as long as it takes usually. So sprint zero is a fake sprint. This is known. It's implicitly acknowledged, which is why it's called sprint zero rather rather than sprint one. The challenge that we face with this particular anti-pattern of sprint zero is turning that sprint zero into a proper sprint one, if you will, a genuine sprint. And we can do that by getting some value out of it in a time boxed way, some real value out of it in a time boxed way. There are two things we need to do in order to achieve that to get value out of that, that first sprint. The first thing we need to do is to limit the amount of setup and initialization work as far as possible. Remember, our goal in an agile way of working is to get value out the door as early and as often as we can. So the smallest amount of setup work that we can do before we can start delivering value is the right amount of setup work we need to do at that time. So if we can get even just a little bit of value, even if it's just one or two user stories, let's say, out the door and into the hands of users where there can be a return on investment or where validated learning can happen, that's what we need to do. So all of this setup work that goes into the so-called sprint zero, maybe we can just, just, just do a little part of that to begin with, just to get things rolling. And all the rest of the, uh, of, of the setup and initiation can be done as and when it is needed on effectively a just-in-time basis. That's a much better way of being able to crack this nut of, um, of, 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 of sprint zero, of project setup and initialization. Do it on a just-in-time basis, but do it using proper sprints that are time-boxed. Another thing we need to do, another way of tackling this problem, this the second angle that we need to we need, we need to take if we are to get if we are to turn a sprint zero into a real sprint. The second thing we need to do is to get product owners, encourage, coach, train, whatever, but get product owners to actually value some of that setup work. After all. Something like setting up a product backlog, let's say, should be something that a product owner cares about. 
So if a product owner starts taking the line, well, you know, I don't care about any of this setup work. That's not giving value to me. That's actually a dysfunction that the product owner is exhibiting. The product owner should care about that because the product owner is responsible for the complete journey into service, the full journey into service of a product before its development starts and after its development is completed. The product owner is responsible for the complete product life cycle and its total return on investment over its lifetime. So it's quite reasonable to get a product owner to care about this initialization work, certainly around things like product backlogs, around events that are used for planning, sprint goals, events for reviewing a product, and, um, and how well it's fitting market needs. All of this should be something, should be things that a product owner cares about. There is no reason, really, in an agile way of working, to have a sprint zero that is a fake sprint, that isn't really a sprint, that isn't delivering the minimum value that is needed in order to satisfy a market need or to validate a market need, yeah? And there's no excuse for not having it time boxed. All of this can be managed using approaches like Scrum in an agile way of working.